Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. in heaven, matchless in love, power, glory, and all that is good. We humbly stand in your presence, offering ourselves in praise to you. For only you are holy. Only you deserve our praise and worship. You created all things, and through you all things were created. And for you all things were created, visible and invisible in the heavenly realms and on earth. The bodies within the universe follow the very precise and ordered course that you set, all in perfect alignment and synchronization. And yet, within the incalculability of your creation, you know each of us by name. You know our hearts, you know our strengths, our weaknesses, our needs, and our desires. No one is beneath your notice. May we all worship you with the life that you gave us. And may your will be done here on earth just as it is in heaven. You almighty God always was, always is, and forever shall be. You are above and beyond anything else. For you are the creator. All others are creatures and all to you must bow. We cannot fathom or understand the scope of your omnipotence or omniscience. 
but we acknowledge you to be the one and only true and living God. You are our Savior, the great shepherd, and we are the sheep of your pasture. You, Father, are overflowing in grace and mercy, and on that we depend. We, your people, have ignored and deliberately disobeyed your commandments. You made a world that was perfect, and through our disobedience, corruption took root. To this day, we are wayward and have strayed from your righteousness, but you have never abandoned us. Lord, we repent of these transgressions, for you sent your Son to pay the price for our sin. So we turn to you, Holy Spirit, to help us to cast away our sin. Help us to find our way back to our holy and righteous Savior. For Jesus is the way and the truth. Help us never to be confounded. Please forgive us. May we always and unwaveringly believe in him, Jesus the Christ, so that we may not perish but enjoy everlasting life. Thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace. As we immerse ourselves daily in this time of devotion, help us to reflect deeply on your word. We commit to being your disciples and be faithful to your call on our lives. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. We reflect this evening on the passage taken from Matthew 19, 13 to 15, a familiar passage to many of us, one that reminds us of Jesus' love for children. They are gifts to us. The passage reads, Then the little children were being brought to him in order that he may lay his hands on them and pray. The disciples spoke sternly to those who brought them. But Jesus said, Let the little children come to me. And do not stop them, for it is to these little ones that the kingdom of heaven belongs. And he laid his hands on them, blessed them, and went on his way. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. 
thank you, O Lord God, for the many blessings bestowed upon us every day, even though we are so unworthy. In spite of the fearful and uncertain happenings in our country at this time, we are grateful for yet another opportunity to gather on this social platform and meet across borders to praise and worship you. We ask for a special anointing of the Holy Spirit as we tune our hearts to receive the message. And so may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For you are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The story is told of a little boy, eight years old, who continued to annoy his father, who was busy in his study preparing a sermon for Sunday service. After the fifth interruption, the father gave him a puzzle to fix, a map of the world with 500 pieces. The little boy went away happily to fix his puzzle, and within half an hour returned to his father. When his father, filled with surprise, asked him how he had finished it so quickly, his cheeky response was, I fixed the man first, daddy. There's a picture of a man at the back. His father was astonished, but needless to say, he had a few salient points to add to his sermon. The moral of the story, if we get the man right, the whole world will be right. This is very true. And that, my brother and sisters in Christ, should be the goal of us as followers of Christ. Get the man right first, then everything else will fall into place. In a few weeks, many children are expected to enter school, some little ones for the first time. However, there is much uncertainty about how this will happen during this COVID-19 season. Not only do children and all who work in the educational field have to observe the protocols, but the delivery of education as we know it would be very different. There may be the blended classroom, both physical and e-learning settings. Parents now have the option of homeschooling. This is the preferred choice, not only because of the COVID-19 protocols, but because many are still fearful of incidences happening among children in our schools. The indiscipline and disrespectful behavior, the rebelliousness and lesson and level of violence among the youth, the gang activity and brazen criminal behaviors being exhibited are alarming and of great concern to parents. Government agencies and various individual groups and organizations express concern about these problems and are eager to find solutions and save our youth. Some place blame on the home, on parents, the educational system, the church, or lack of influence the church seems to have on our youth. As a former teacher and principal, having spent almost 40 years in service, I make bold to say that no one entity can be blamed. We begin in the home, but a multifaceted approach must be used to help remedy the situation. We can't speak about the children without reference to the home. In the passage read, the mothers who brought small children to Jesus doubtless were parents who believed in him. They wanted Jesus to lay his hands on their little ones to pray for them and impart his blessings on them. The fact that they were brought may indicate that at least some of them were being carried. They were too small to come on their own. In wanting Jesus to pronounce a blessing on them, the parents revealed their love and concern for their children. When the disciples saw what was happening, they rebuked those who brought the little children. Jesus responded very differently to how the disciples expected. He asked that the little children be allowed to come to him and that they should not be hindered. He then used the opportunity to stress an important truth. The kingdom of God is for these little ones. He further stated, Whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The disciples underestimated the tremendous love Jesus has for children. We must all come to Jesus in childlike faith, and with that kind of attitude to approach God. The fact that Jesus valued children highly should indicate to all of us that we should do so too, hold children in highest regard. 
That is what is expected of us as imitators of Christ. Psalm 127 verse 3 reminds us that children are an inheritance of the Lord, the offspring, a reward from him. And Mark 9.42 reads, If anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for them if a large millstone were hung around their neck and they were thrown into the sea. Children are God's gifts to us, and as parents should be seen as blessings and not burdens. How many of us, parents, teachers, church leaders, and others, see children, even the troublesome and mischievous ones, as gifts from God, on loan from Him to us, and acknowledge that it is our duty to raise them according to His will and purpose for their lives? We need godly parents to raise our children effectively in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Parents are responsible God-fearing adults to help reverse or stem the negative path some of our children seem to be traveling, a path that leads to destruction and negatively affect the future of our nation. On the other hand, we must encourage those children who are confident and focused, who set positive goals and work hard to achieve them. We must give support to these children and pray that they continue on that path and they will stand strong against the evil devices of the enemy and shun worldly desires and unwholesome influences of the minority. There are examples of godly mothers referenced in scripture. The story of Hannah comes to mind. She was barren and prayed for the child Samuel as recorded in 1 Samuel 22. Her prayers were answered. And she, in her wisdom, gave him back to the Lord to be raised by Eli, the priest. There are many examples and faith stories which can be cited of persons having much influence on their offspring. There is Mary, the mother of Jesus, who searched frantically for him for three days when he had journeyed with them to the feast of the Passover in Jerusalem and could not be found. It was Mary, the devoted mother, who stood teary-eyed at the foot of the cross as she witnessed the cruel death of her son. When the disciples scattered, she stayed. The lesson here is, through all the moments of intense pain and sufferings, mothers pray for their children. The question may be asked, when we look into the faces of our children, what are we seeing? Are we seeing greatness? What are we speaking over them? Speak life into them. Tell them from an early age that he or she will become a blessing to the family. The first university graduate, a great musician, a poet, a designer, a technician, a counselor or a prime minister. Godly mothers see the potential in their children because they look for it. My Bible tells me that life and death are in the power of the tongue. Proverbs 18, 21. If we as guardians of the nation's children are sensitive to the leading of, the, of God's Holy Spirit, God gives us the wisdom, the insight, the intuition, and discernment to see what others will never see. So we have a challenge. Let's start looking. It is also good for us to embrace those persons in society and in the institutions that are there to assist us with the nurturing and mentoring of our children. The cubs, the cadets, community groups involved in wholesome activities which will help us to train and nurture young people. Militant disciplined groups like National Youth Service, groups in church and other disciplined associations. We need to pray for godly mentors for our children, such as Paul was to Timothy. Pray for godly Sunday school teachers, youth workers, ministers, and men and women of God to positively influence our children along the path of righteousness and steer them away from the negative influences and unwholesome activities in society. So we will begin to pray or continue to pray for our children. Pray for them when we sit up. And when we lie down, when we are at work or at rest, pray when we walk or drive along the road, cry out to God, call out their names to God, even in our sleep. 
We cannot deny the existence of the various crises in the family and in our nation. It is enough for us to throw our hands up in despair. However, I still believe that if we want to see an improvement and reversal of these happenings, we must fight back with the strongest weapon we know how. Pray. And with the prayer, take action. We need to snatch our children from the hands of the enemy and reclaim them as the Lord's. When God comes through for us, he will spread a table right in the presence of our enemies and there's nothing they can do about it. This is a clarion call tonight, brothers and sisters in Christ, for our praying mothers, praying fathers, praying adults, full of the fervent love and compassion for God and love for their fellow man. If we pray believing and are faithful to our God, our prayers will be answered and with patience we will see the results we are seeking. I challenge each one now, take time to reach out to a child tonight. Speak lovingly to a child. Give a hug, a smile, do a kind deed, listen to him or her, and let all else seem to fail, pray. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Oh, Heavenly Father, we are your people, one family in Christ and heirs to your kingdom. We humbly bow in your presence, confessing our sin and our total dependence upon you. We know that all things are possible with you and without you we can do nothing. We call you Abba, Father. We are made in your image and acknowledge you as our Heavenly Father and friend. As our Father, you have been our protector, our provider, sustainer and comforter. You have imparted much knowledge and wisdom to us, the perfect example and model for us to follow. May we... As good followers of Christ, impart these same values to our children and those you have entrusted to our care. Help us to work together to build a strong families, better communities, a better nation, and a better world. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Father, 
It is your word that opens up the truth to us and gives us clarity and understanding. And so we thank you. We thank you for its richness and wonder, helping us to see its consistency, its solidarity, and a lack of confusion in its words. And so, Lord, remind us of the responsibility that we all have for your children to lead them to Christ and help them to grow in the nature and admonition of you. Help us to speak kind words over them that they may grow in grace and see you as their loving Father and Lord of their lives. And so may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace today, tomorrow, for the rest of this week and for the rest of your lives. And the children of God say, Amen. for being a part of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.